Hey, what's going on YouTube? It's Splash here, and today I got another Diablo 4 video for you guys. Um, in today's video, we got a brand new rogue build for you in Season 4, and it's the Heartseeker Rogue build. I gotta say, this build is a ton of fun. Um, if you like bow builds, you're gonna love this one. It can pretty much do everything in the game flawlessly, all the Torments and Bosses, Uber Lilith, hit 100+. plus. So if you guys uh, are interested in this, stay tuned. I'll have a build planner in the you know, description below, and uh, I'll go through and show you guys my skill tree, the gear, and the paragon for it. So hope you guys enjoy, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Alright guys, so looking at my skill tree, let's get right into it. We're going to dump all our points into Heartseeker, and then Enhanced, and then Primary Heartseeker for the Ricochet rounds. Going on to our core skills, we're not going to grab any, but we're going to do 3 out of 3 on Stutter Step, 3 out of 3 on Sturdy for the damage reduction, 3 out of 3 on Siphoning Strikes. This one's kind of preference, if you don't like the Siphoning Strikes, feel free to take these points out and put them elsewhere. Um, moving on, I do put 3 points into Shadow Step. It's our only unstoppable in the build. It's really good for getting out of like CCs. Two points into Rugged for the damage reduction on dot effects. Caltrops because we have Aspects and uh, Frigid Finesse, which is just giving us more damage. And plus this has a pretty big multiplier for enemies that are uh, damaged by Caltrops. It can go up to 45x multiplier, so it's pretty good. Uh, I also grabbed Dash for the mobility. I just put two points into it. And then coming over here, one point into Concussive, one point into Trick Attacks. Uh, moving on to the subterfuge skills, we're going to dump a ton of points into Dark Shroud, go into the Enhanced, and then this is optional right here. I did Subverting just to max out my movement speed, but if you want a little bit more crit chance, you could go for the Countering Dark, Dark Shroud as well. Two points into the Smoke Grenade, just gives us a little bit of extra damage multiplier, and it's just a way to apply a CC if we need. Uh, one point into Poison Trap reason for the poison trap is because we go into depilidating toxins as well as deadly venom for the damage reduction and the poison damage. And then right here, self-explanatory exploit malice for the multiplicative damage bonuses and frigid finesse as well right here for a huge multiplier against frozen enemies. And then moving to the bottom of our skill tree, one point into adrenaline rush, three out of three on haste for that extra attack speed, and then victimize. So basically this whole build is us scaling vulnerable damage and lucky hit to proc those victimize explosions which do hundreds of millions of damage once you get you know pretty min maxed and, and very good gear. So that's the skill tree that I'm running, everything will be in the planner below as well. Alright let's quickly go over the gear. So starting off with the helmet we're running a Shaco, if you don't have Shaco you can run a legendary helmet with lucky hit dexterity life, that'll be fine, just throw a defensive aspect on there. Uh, for the chest piece though, you're going to want might aspect for the damage reduction and then for the affixes life, armor, ranks to dark shroud. For the tempers I went with life and lucky hit chance to stun. Um, ideally you want a greater affix on the dark shroud ranks just for the extra damage reduction, it's extremely good. Moving on to the gloves, uh, we're running the concussive aspect for the chance to daze and the extra damage. And then for the affixes we have life, attack speed, lucky hit chance, tempers, vulnerable, lucky hit chance to freeze. Uh, if anything I would change out the life for crit chance and these gloves would be pretty much best in slot for me. Moving on to the pants, it's very similar dexterity life, ranks to heart seeker, ideally you want that to be greater affix wasn't lucky enough to get that and then for the aspect we're running the umbrus aspect which is one of the best aspects you know for this build just because it gives us so much damage reduction and this is the reason why we put so many points into dark shroud but we're not actually using it it's because our crit strikes will give us the dark shrouds um also with the pants i have lightning res but i'm already capped so 
if I were to change anything, I would try to find Greater Affix Heartseeker Pants, and then I would do the tempers on like Lucky Hit Chance to Freeze, Stun, or uh, my other temper like Life or Armor instead of Lightning Res. Moving on to the boots, we're running the Frostbitten aspect, huge multiplier to stunned enemies as well as Frozen. So again, that's why we're doing the Lucky Hit Chance to Freeze, Lucky Hit Chance to Stun, because it dips into this Frostbitten aspect, and it also dips into our Frigid Finesse in our skill tree. Uh, but for the boots, I have greater affix on movement speed, then I have dexterity, life, and for the tempers, another movement speed, and lucky hit chance to freeze. Moving on to our two-handed bow, we're running uh, the moonrise aspect. This is the most important aspect for this build. If you don't have it, don't even respec until you get this. Um, and then for the rolls on the bow, dexterity, life, vulnerable, tempers on vulnerable, and then chance for heart seeker projectiles to cast twice and you want the greater affix on vulnerable ideally. Moving on to the amulet, we're running the adaptability aspect. Again, this is the second most important aspect in the build, and if you don't have this yet, I wouldn't respec just yet. Um, for your amulet though, you ideally want to have two of these um, two of these affixes that I have, ideally exploit and frigid finesse, the passives, the plus ranks. If you don't have those two, just one is fine. Um, you would want Frigid Finesse, it just gives you more damage. And then maybe like Lucky Hit or Attack Speed or Armor, whatever you're missing, you can kind of just throw on your amulet, but you you do want these um, Frigid Finesse ranks or Exploit ranks because they just give you so much damage. So if I were to get a new amulet, I would want Greater Affix on Frigid Finesse, but I really enjoy having Exploit and Malice on it. And then for your Tempers, you definitely want Vulnerable, other ones kind of your choice i went with movement speed just so i could cap my movement speed um and then like i said before this adaptability aspect is so important for this build so if you don't have it uh wait until you get it before you respec going on to our rings for the first one i'm running the rapid aspect which is just giving us more attack speed um and then for the rolls on the ring attack speed crit chance lucky hit greater affix on the lucky hit is most important uh caltrops cooldown reduction and then vulnerable damage Moving to our second ring, we're running a Cursed Touch. This is how we're applying vulnerability in the build and how we're keeping it up at all times. Um, same rolls on this ring, attack speed, crit chance, lucky hit, with the greater affix on lucky hit being the most important. And then again, temper on vulnerable damage. And I think I was trying to get Caltrop's cooldown reduction, but I ended up just hitting dash. Um, I still have three tempers left, but because it was a max roll, I said, you know what, I'm just going to keep it. Uh, but if I were to keep re-rolling, I would go for cooldown reduction on the Caltrops. Um, and then moving on to our dual wields, Dexterity, Life, Vulnerable, Temper on Vulnerable, and then Caltrop Size. And as I mentioned, you could do Caltrop's Duration on this one. Um, or you could do Heart Seeker like I did if you just want to make sure you're at 100%. Um, but both of these have Dexterity, Life, Vulnerable, and then the other Temper on Vulnerable. And for the Aspects, Edge Masters, and Elements just for the extra multipliers. So that's the gear that I'm running, and uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at the Paragon board as well. Alright guys, let's go ahead and take a look at the Paragon board that we're using. I did reference this from Max Roll, one of the one of the build guides on there. I referenced it and just kind of changed it up a little bit towards like my build um, to optimize it a little bit more. There was a bunch of different stuff that they had that I took out, but I did want to give a shout out because I did reference it from them. So starting off, first board I went with Control. Second board, Exploit Weakness for the Legendary Node and for our Ranger Glyph. Third board is Lorena's Instinct, where we slot in the Pride Glyph. We're getting a bunch of bonuses here, Poison Res and our Resistance to All. Going into our fourth board, this is No Witnesses, where we put in the Diminished Glyph for just a huge bonus to max life. Fifth board, Deadly Ambush, big multiplier right here to enemies affected by trap skills. And then we put in our Exploit Glyph for more vulnerable damage. And for the last board, we went with Cheap Shot, and we put in the Chip Glyph. So, like I said, I referenced this from Max Roll. It is a really good board, though. Um, but nonetheless, guys, I do stream on Twitch. Uh, link will be in the description. If you guys enjoyed this video, please like, comment, subscribe. It helps me out a ton. If you guys want to come hang out, I'm usually live on weekends. So, if you guys just want to come tune in and chat, talk or even get help with like tormented bosses or Lilith, feel free to hit me up, um, usually live. So appreciate you guys and uh, catch you in the next video.